Welcome to section number nine. And uh, we got to pages 116, pages 116 of your test. Okay, now before we continue, let me give you a quick summary of what we've been doing so far. Okay, so I, and I do this on this white screen. All right, so, so far we have been talking about um, exponential growth and exponential decay. Okay, but before we did that, uh, we were able to establish the relationship that absolute and relative changes have with exponential decay and exponential growth and linear models. Is that okay? Where we said that for um, a linear model, okay, when absolute change stays the same, we have a linear model. And then for an exponential growth, or exponential model, let me just put that for an exponential model. Okay, relative change stays the same. Is that okay? And then we came down to, um, Exponential model, right? Where we said that we spoke about exponential growth. So under an exponential model, we have exponential growth and exponential decay. Okay. And we dealt with the various formulas and we said that for exponential growth, the amount is equal to the initial. Okay the growth factor, I'll call it the GF to the T. Okay, and then we looked at how you can find the growth factor. And we said the growth factor, when the percentage increase is given, is one plus the percentage increase. Okay, that gives you the growth factor. But in a situation where you do not have the percentage increase, but you have consecutive numbers, you can find the growth factor using the new over the old. Okay. And then we, so that is for exponential growth. Then we came down to look at exponential decay where we said the amount is equal to the initial, okay, the decay factor to the T. Is that okay? And we said that for the decay factor, So let me rewrite that. Decay factor is one minus the percentage decrease. Okay. When you are given the percentage decrease and when you are not given the percentage decrease, but you are given consecutive numbers, you do the new over the old. Is that okay? So basically uh, we have been looking at growth and decay. And these are the formulas that are needed in dealing with these. And these are on pages um, 235 and 236 of your test. Is that okay? Nice. So I just wanted to understand and put these formulas side by side and look at um, the relationship between each of them. Is that right? Nice. Now, let us quickly go back to our slide and begin talking about um, the present and the king. So surely you have heard the fable about the princess being rescued by the present. Her father, the king, was so grateful that he offered a reward in which he would pay the present a dollar, then double the amount every day for 30 days. Well, the queen, the queen is a very good is very good at math and tells the king, we had better, we had better offer, or we better offer a different plan, or the affording fortunes will be gone. Now, in response, the king comes up with a new plan to offer the present, showing him how the beginning of a table, which proves the new plan is generous. 
Is that okay? So this is the original plan. This is what this is what they were using to pay the peasants, right? And this is the new plan that the king developed. Is that okay? Now we are going to see um, how uh, the difference between these two plans, whether one is a linear model or the other is what? Exponential. So let's see at the end of nine days, this is the setup and let's answer um, some questions under this table. Now, what kind of growth pattern is the original plan? All right, and you could see that because it doubles, that is an exponential model. So the original plan, that's why the, the queen advised that that was going to take away your fortunes and that will prove to you. Now, what kind of growth pattern is the new or the improved plan? And you realize that that is a linear model because the absolute change stays the same. Is that okay? Absolute change is staying the same at $5 per day. But you realize that in the original plan, uh, relative change is the same, but absolute change is not the same. Is that right? Now, find the mathematical model for the original plan, and that is an exponential plan. So you do Y, or the amount is equal to the initial, the growth factor to the T. And if you want to find the mathematical model for the new or the improved plan, you have Y is equal to 5X plus what, 20. And if you want to find for each, you just plug in five, okay, six, seven, eight, and then you find these values and you generate that. Now, what comment can you make about the new plans? Uh, the new, uh, the two plans for this one to five. The new plan was paying more than the original, but you realize that it started out very, very small. Okay, so it's a very deceptive plan. How are the days? Um, six to nine different. The original plan pays more than the new plan. Is that okay? And what general conclusion can you make when comparing these two linear and exponential models? So linear model starts out higher, but exponential model surpasses over time. Okay. So you remember I asked you if you were going for an investment, would you go for a simple interest investment or an exponential model investment. For an investment, an exponential model investment is better, right? Because you get more on your money, all right? But for a loan that you have to pay more out of your pocket, you realize that it is always good to go for a simple interest loan. And that's okay because compound interest would take so much from you. Now, this is a table that compares linear and exponential model, right? So take note of the difference between a linear model and an exponential model. Is that right? Nice. Now here, this is uh, comparing exponential and linear and how you can use Excel to generate the graphs. Okay, so the, the processes are spelled out, spelled out in your book and you should be able to um, go through and get these generated. Okay, sweet. Now here, this starts our discussion on simple interest. So if money could be invested at simple interest, then each year you would earn interest only on the original amount that you invested, which is called a principal, right? Here is how to find simple interest and balance. So simple interest is the principal times the rate times time, okay? So the rate will always be in percentage and the time will always be in years, most of the time, okay? Yeah. And the principal is how much you invested. So single deposit, consider $1,000 and a simple interest of 4%, okay? The interest, on that is $40. So if you want to know the balance, you add the interest to the principal. So the balance is equal to the principal plus the interest, okay? And that gave us 1,040. So here, we're going to use that to find the interest, how much interest will be earned in three years. So the principal multiplied by the rate. So the rate is what, 4%, you change 4% to a decimal, and then you multiply by the number of years. And the balance at the end of the day is the principal plus the what the interest. 
Now, the simple interest model has the same interest value every time. So this kind of growth is adding the same value. So it is a linear model. All right, so absolute change is the same for a linear model. Okay, now we want to look at compound interest. And for compound interest, uh, when money is invested and in compound interest, it earns interest only on the, not only on the principal, but also on the accumulated interest of previous periods. Is that okay? So this is the formula we're going to use for compound interest annually, compounded annually, right? Compounded annually. We're going to look at compounded periodically. Okay, so this is the formula and uh, take note of that. And that formula can be found on your formula sheet on pages two, three, six, okay? So here, we call this interest on interest. So we find for year three, okay, year four, year five, okay? And that is how compound interest works, okay? Nice. Now, how much interest was earned in the first year? $40, okay? How much interest was earned during the second year? Okay, and then you take the first year from um, the second, and that gives you the interest end. And how much more? Okay, so you do um, this minus that, and that gives you that. And then you compare to the first um, year, and that is a, a difference of 6.79. Okay, nice. Now, you want to check. So here is a graph, simple interest, and that is for what? Compound interest. And you realize that there's a higher margin, a difference between the two, okay? So now we want to assume a 2,000 deposit with an APR of 2.25. How much will be in the account after five years? So the principal multiplied by one plus, okay? the rate and make sure you change that APR to a percent, to a decimal, sorry. So you change from percent to a decimal, parentheses, and then the time goes to the top. And how much interest is accumulated over the period. So here, this is, a, this is the balance at the end of the period. So you take the principal from that amount and that gives you the interest. And now you use the same thing to find how much balance of money will be in the account after 10 years. And if you want to find the interest, you subtract the principal from the balance. And that gives you the interest at the end of the day. Now, is the interest after 10 years twice? No, the 10 year value has interest on interest for five to 10, right? Now, if the deposit and simple interest for 10 years, so we want to compare simple interest. It's just the principal multiplied by the rate times the time. Okay, so you realize that compound interest will give you more on your money than simple interest. Okay, now, so, so far we've been looking at simple interest, uh, compound interest annually. All right, interest compounded annually. Now we're going to look at periodic interest. Periodic interest we are looking at um, we're going to look at stuff like quarterly, uh, semi-annually, and uh, monthly, weekly, okay, and daily interests. So by doing that, you realize that you just have to divide this, the interest by the number of times compounded. And then exponent here, you do times the number of times compounded each year times the number of years. So check, and I will distinguish that to you very soon. So quarterly, so for instance, this example is talking about a quarterly interest. So we had to divide the APR by four and that four goes there to multiply the years, okay? And be careful how you put this in your card. So note this closely, okay? So be careful how you do this. I've seen students have the mathematical expression, right? But putting it in the card 
always gives problems. So be careful how you do that. Parenthesis is very significant, right? Now, 2000 is invested for eight years at 6% for eight years. We want to find a balance if it is compounded quarterly. So because we're talking about quarterly interest, how many quarters do we have in a year? So we do this because the interest is for the year. So quarterly, how many quarters do we have in the year? We have four quarters in a year. So that's why we divide the APR because the APR is what annual percentage rate and you divide it by four and you have four by eight and that gives you that. Now, compounded monthly, compounded monthly. How many months do we have in a year? We have 12 months in a year. So you divide the APR because the APR is for the year, you divide that by what, 12, and that gives you that. Now, compounded daily, compounded daily. How many days are there in a year? 365, so you divide the APR by what, 365. And what pattern do you see from A to C? The more times you compound, the more interest you earn. Hmm. Make sense? Okay. Now, given the choice between an account that compounds weekly and an account that compounds quarterly, which account would accrue more? And it's quite obviously, weekly presents more opportunities to earn interest. Is that okay? So the weekly is a good option. Okay. Now we look at stop on periodic interest, compound interest. And here, this is semi-annually, twice a year, right? So we divide the rate by two. And our balance is like that. And here, we are looking at compounded every week. How many weeks are there in a year? 52. So we divide the rate by what? 52. And that same number goes to the top to multiply the number of what? Yes. And that is our balance at the end of the period. Sounds good? Okay. Number four, we look at 18 months. Okay. We want to know how much it will be worth in 18 months and it's compounded monthly. How many months are there in a year? So we have 12 months in a year. We have to change the APR to a decimal. We divide that by 12 and we have to change 18 months to what? Years, we have months, so we have to change two years, and that is what, 1.5 years, okay? And that gives you that balance at the end of the day. Okay? Nice. Gucci, Gucci. So this is the case because here we maintain 18 because what, 12 times 1.5 will give you 18. Okay, it's just a coincidence if you had, so you just need to change um, the, the month into years, change that to years all the time because the unit of time is years, okay? Nice. Now, we want to look at Benjamin Franklin and it's reported to have said, a penny saved is a penny earned. So, he's a very, he was a very generous guy and uh, he gave some amount of money to the city of Philadelphia. Okay, and uh, he gave them some ways the money should be invested. So when you read through all that, it says at the end of the 100 years, each city was allowed to spend three quarters of it on a city improvement project. So how much he gave, all right? He gave, he left a thousand pounds, okay? And he gave them some instructions on how this money should be invested and spent. And we're going to use this what Benjamin Franklin did to look at compound interest. So using the amount estimated, how much should a city um, at the end have had at the end of the first century? Century is what, 100 years. So it's compound interest annually, all right? And that should be the amount. Assuming they had amount, the amount estimated above, how much should have been invested for the next um, 100 years. He said uh, three quarters of the amount should be used for city improvement project. That means a quarter should be what reinvested. 
and reinvest a quarter of that amount for the next 100 years, and that should be the balance, okay? Nice. All right. Now, let's look at the rule of 74 doubling. An exponential function with a constant rate, growth rate of R doubles in approximately 70 over P years. Okay, so we want to know if you put down some money, how long it will take you for the money to double. So, and this is the formula you use, 70 over P. And this P must be maintained. This P must not be converted to a decimal. So for example, if the growth rate of a single deposit at a bank is 3.5, the deposit will double in, you have to do 70 over the rate, 3.5, and it will take 20 years to double. And we are going to prove all these. So now, uh, compounded annually, so if you have 5,000 compounded at the rate of 3.5, we want to use compound interest formula to know the balance at the end of the period. Okay, 20 years. And we want to check the rule for doubling if the amount really double. So did your money approximately double? Yes. Okay, so it would take 20 years for the amount to double. And when you check, this is approximately twice of how much was invested, okay? So when you're asked to check how long the money will double, just do 70 over P, and the P, the rate must be maintained. It should not be changed to a decimal, okay? Now, suppose 1,007% interest compounded annually. Use the rule of 70 to predict the doubling time. Okay, so you do 70 divided by seven and it will take 10 years for that money to double. We wanna check if that is true using the compound interest and we plug in t, 10 for our T and we realize that the money is approximately twice of how much was invested. Is that okay? So to save yourself the time, just do 70 over the P. I've seen students trying to go systematically work series of problems before getting it but this formula gives you the answer in one shot okay so note that is that okay so we're talking about the population for liberia and spain and we want to know how long it will take for these populations to double okay and that is the doubling time for these two countries okay and uh, we use this a fish, a fish full of dollars and um, 93 cents, okay, growing at this rate, okay, for some number a thousand years. And that is it. Yes, it really works. Is that okay? Nice. So here is the practice and these are the problems and those, these have been solved just to help you be able to go through your assignments. The number of Facebook users doubled six months after uh, starting in March of 2014, okay? So that is doubling. So, and what's the unit of time measured in months, right? And what's the exponential equation for the number of Facebook users in the, if the number of users in March, okay, is the initial value and time is measured in six months in the row. Okay, estimate the number of users in 2007, okay. And that is the value and an estimated 400 ml of a pesticide that degrades. So there's degradation. So we're talking about what? decay. And you want to know the decay, um, how many ml of pesticide will remain after four weeks. So you plug in four for your T and you have to here, you have to use guess and check to determine the time. Okay. And that is approximately that 12 weeks. And here you have the amount of money in the account. 
So you really have not been given the growth factor. So you have to do the new over the old to find the growth factor. And that's 1.15, okay? And you construct your model and you can use that model to estimate how much is in the account for every given year. And you have to use guess and check to estimate how long it would it take for the account to grow a thousand dollars okay and it will take 10 years to do that okay and you look at you know when you buy a car the moment you drive that car out of the showroom the value depreciates so we are looking at the depreciation rate for mazda mayaja and ford mustang and you have to do that mustang right all right and you look at the two and at what point the value of the ford exceed the value of the Mazda? four years right and that's basically um about it all right so take your time go through these examples practice them and you can turn your pages over and you can then um, get to the assignment and begin working on them so work through and think through these okay and that's about it for section um, number nine so thank you very much for your audience and i wish you good luck see you soon Bye-bye.